because really it's a race against time to find a submersible that went missing with five people on board near the site of the wrecked Titanic on Sunday. Yeah, the latest tweets from the Coast Guard say a Canadian military surveillance aircraft detected underwater noise, but who knows what that could be, and relocated their search efforts. It's estimated that those on board, you just saw their pictures, have less than a day's worth of oxygen left, if the vessel is even still functioning at, at all. So we want to get to underwater archaeologist and president of Dolan Research. Lee Cox is here to talk more about this. So this Thank submersible, we shouldn't call it a submarine because this thing's only like 20 feet long, right? Right. Submersible. And, it, and it's submersible versus submarine. It doesn't have the power to um, yeah. propel itself or extract itself from the water. So. What they did, they want to go down two and a half miles to the site of the Titanic, which sank in, what, 1912? Yeah. Uh, but they lost track of them. Like it was within an hour and a half. Yeah, well, the the submersible was outfitted with a pinger, so the, it would ping and in contact with the surface personnel. Constantly ping? No, it would ping at intervals. But okay. Yeah, and so they lost track of it after an hour and a half, and apparently the reporting I've heard is that it was a, just above the wreck of the Titanic when they l had their last interaction. So they got down to it, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Right, to the vicinity of the Titanic, and that's the last communication that um, the surface uh, you know, surface folks had received. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing reports now from other journalists and people who have done stories on uh, this submersive is that that happens it can, happens from time to time where you lose contact for a little bit and then is that well the report yeah so it's happened in in previous um uh, expeditions mm -hmm. of this this organization they've done i think roughly 12 a dozen or so previous um trips to the titanic and they have lost communication periodically but, it comes um, but back. this is sustained yeah mm -hmm. so um it's really troubling that they have lost all communication um, what's it made out of this submersible well, it's titanium as one of the components to it, and I think carbon fiber. I'm not sure the exact components, but, what, but it's and very they strong. Bolted in from the outside. So yeah, the the the, the uh, folks have no ability to extract themselves. So it's bolted with 18 bolts from the exterior of the vessel. So it can they can only be um, removed by somebody on the outside. So somebody on the surface or somebody. What kind of pressure are we talking about, the two and a half miles down? Um, like if you threw a car in there and it went down to two and a half miles, would it just it would, yeah. implode it, on it, itself? The, the pressure is, is, is extreme, very extreme. So nuclear submarines can't even go that deep because wow. they're, not, they're not configured to be able to sustain that pressure. Wow. It's, so, oh God, if we talk about this latest news that we're hearing that a lot of folks are, are um, thinking about and saying, oh, this is a sign of hope, the fact that they've heard the reports that they've heard noise, banging yeah. every 30 minutes, and it's been over, you know, for about a four or five hour span, but they're hearing that consistently. Do you think that is a sign? It's, it's, that's the only positive thing that I've heard mm -hmm. since Monday. And it is, if, if it indeed is true, that is a positive sign. Because are there things banging in the ocean besides that? Is that do you hear if, noises? If what's reported is true, if it's at you know intervals that are you know 50 or, or 30 minutes, then that would mean that a human being most likely is doing that, as if opposed was, to just something banging you know with the at current. At random, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think I'd be banging away. Well, you have to save your energy and oxygen too, right? So yeah. um, they would try to distinguish whether or not it's just a random noise banging away or if it's some human that's behind it mm -hmm. trying to, um, you know, alert people above that they're still, you know, life. They're still viable. But even still, getting it and bringing it back up is still going to be an issue, right? Yeah, you can't just go and scoop it up. Nothing's ever been you know, attempted this deep. I mean, the deepest extraction of, of human beings uh, is roughly just under 2,000 feet. Um, oh it God. happened in 1973, the Pisces III, wow. submersible, and there was just two And that men. would be a ship goes over and, and somehow brings yeah, they it had a, They had another similar submersible, yeah, that was able to go next to it and attach yeah. and raise it up. And apparently when they, it was a similar situation where they had about 90 hours of available oxygen for these two men and um, when they opened it again they had to be they'd had to be open from the outside um, they, they estimated that the men only had about 15 minutes of oxygen left and they were saved um, so that's, that's the hope but again feet. that was only at 1500 feet this we're talking two and a half know, miles two and a half miles all right Lee thank you yes thank you, you. we appreciate your insight on this one uh, fingers crossed prayers